There we go. All right. Um, so, like I said, as we thank you and welcome, it's two, it's two o'clock uh, Central Time. Um, and uh, let's start with the uh, prayer that is familiar to, to most of us uh, from St. Ignatius from Loyola. Take the Lord and receive all my liberty, my memory, my understanding, and my entire will. All I have and call my own. You have given all to me, to you, Lord, ever turning. Everything is yours. Do with it what you will. Give me only your love and your grace. That is enough for me. Amen. All right. So, um, again, what we always like to do um, just with, when we start these presentations is just to give you a little bit of orientation about the, the way these, these presentations are designed. And, um, and, and, and we talked a little bit about, we kind of put it in perspective as to how JVLA's professional development is put together. Okay. And so, you know, we, we, we do a lot of different types of programming and you'll see there on the, as you'll see there on the, on the, 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 uh, the diagram there. And as you move further to the right, it gets more complicated, it gets more robust, and we really are, the expectations go up as you move to the right, really. Um, and so, you know, really as you're, as you're moving toward more simulation, planning, sharing, coursework, and so on, you're really talking about trying to, to, to really enhance teaching practices at that point and to really start diving more deeply into and tinkering with and doing more. Um, we're only in the presentation and webinar mode today, which is really about demonstration or about providing information. Um, um, we really don't expect a whole bunch of, of people to change practice based on what you're going to hear today, but we hope you get some good information out of it. Um, so the goal for this pre particular presentation is to share information regarding a hybrid collaborative, which I spelled incorrectly there, learning model, uh, which is being deployed by Seattle Prep, um, Verbum Day, and Red Cloud. Okay. Um, so with that, um, we're going to just walk through some panel, just, uh, some, um, some, we're going to have some panelists just talk about their experience, how we got to the point we are in terms of these classrooms. Um, Mike Kelly is going to start off just providing a little bit of information about, um, uh, Seattle Prep is really sort of the, the, was, was the original driver of it, and the ones who approached JVLA about the, this possibility. Then I'll talk a little bit about the planning part, the things that we did to kind of prepare for the experiences. And We'll talk about the teachers, uh, give them a chance to talk about their, their class and what it's like. We'll hear from a moderator in that perspective. And then we're really lucky to have uh, Tilani Jackson, uh, Jackson with us today from Red Cloud High School. And we really want to particularly say thank you to her today since she didn't even know she was doing this until a few hours ago. She's actually subbing for another student who was going to be helping us today. So, so thanks for being so brave. Um, and for stepping up to do this. After those presentations, we're going to go and we're going to do some Q, uh, we're going to have a, a Q&A. Um, on your screens, you're going to notice that there is a Q&A button on the bottom and there is a chat area, okay? What I'd like you to do is just to use the Q&A area for your questions, right? It makes it just easier for us to follow along. If you have some general comments you'd like to make about, you know, and you want to share something with panelists or that sort of thing, go ahead and use the chat area. But, but please reserve your questions for the Q&A area, okay? Um, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to stop sharing, and I'm going to ask Mike to do, um, to do his, his little part of his presentation. Mike, you want to? Absolutely. So thank you, Jeff. I appreciate the introduction and welcome to everybody. Uh, my name is Michael Kelly and I'm assistant principal at Seattle Prep uh, School in Seattle, Washington, and it's been a joy to collaborate with the people involved here. What I want to do is I just want to give a from an administrative team lens um, why Seattle Prep would create the space and the resources necessary to drive a program like this. So for us as an admin team, uh, really driven by our president, Ken Hickey, uh, we were taking a look at the documents from GC36 and the call for us to collaborate and network um, with new technologies. So that was kind of the fundamental question for us was, well, how can we go about this? How can we create new companions through this document in GC36 that calls us to collaborate and network with others through new technologies? We also happen to be in a unique situation where we're transitioning our relationship with Seattle U from a previous program we had. And so we started to engage in conversations with people at Seattle U 
But for us, the driving um, vision was how can we get students that bring um, a different context to the table than our students that also have a shared mission, our Jesuit Ignatian mission, our grad of grad, and engage in curricular ways that, um, that are authentic and use our technologies to bring students into the classroom that are separated geographically and by time zone. So uh, that was our drive. You know, at our school, collaboration is integral to everything we do. Integration is a hallmark of everything we do. And so for us, what became really important was how can we use our new technologies to get students in the classroom that otherwise wouldn't be able to be in the classroom around authentic curriculum? And, and that's where we landed. And so for us, it was really important for us to then reach out to JVLA and engage them because they had the means by which we could do this and the expertise by which we could do this. And so, Jeff, I'll go ahead and turn it back over to you to talk a little bit more about that. Great. And just to add, since we're all educators, I'm actually going to step out and open the door here and figure out it's lunchtime at our school and ask our students to kind of quiet down. So if you see me go away here, I think we can all <laughs> thank you for your patience. There you go. We can appreciate that. <laughs> um, so um, what I'm going to do, I'm going to go back, share a couple of more slides real quick, um, because it's just to, just to kind of walk through a little bit of, 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 of the, how we ended up then moving to uh, the work that we did to kind of get to this part with the, um, with, um, the, the classrooms, okay? So really what we're talking about in terms of this collaborative classroom model is it really um, something that, that when you look here at the, at, the, at the diagram on your screen, you know, it's really about the, having two schools, right? Participating in one class experience with a single teacher, um, moderators, that are present at the school level, right? So there, there's, a, there's a support person within the school and that support person, the keys that we kind of identified early on is this, we, we, we weren't looking for content experts. We were looking for, for, for people, internal people that uh, students respected and, 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 um, and, and could really manage an experience when, when, when called to do so. And really willing to to help up and partner with the, the teachers in terms of saying, hey, these are the things that are working. Hey, can you? I've got some students here who have questions about X. So really, just trying to serve as a as as an extra resource to help um, 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 integrate some of the the extra components in the hybrid model, the in class experience along with the online experience. Okay. Um, You'll see there on the top, there was a, there was a really more the planning folks or really the administrators of the schools. We had the, the teachers attached to some of the earlier conversations and obviously the JVLA's team, um, then the, the moderators. And then as you can see, there really is the keys in terms of the, the, um, the, 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 the arrows on the screen are really about the ways in which we dialogue with one another and, and primarily how that happens. Okay. Um, the um so really in terms of the planning what we did was this, you know we really started with talking about desired outcomes right um and so those desired outcomes were first and foremost um you know we, we really tried to frame it around um you know looking at this experience this hybrid model versus you know uh, um, um, an online model okay so so that's sort of how we compared it you know not against the, the traditional classroom but really how is it um, you know, what are our desired outcomes um, versus an online, okay? So really the first and foremost was really about performance. Um, and we, um, we, we, we were really trying to, to, to design a hybrid model um, that, that would demonstrate it, um, its effectiveness through, um, through higher rates of on-task um, uh, performance, right? Um, versus our counterparts in, in online, okay? Um, and so, and, and we, we, we believe that, um, not surprisingly, that as, you know, um, on-task performance uh, goes up, so does grades, right? So that's sort of a, 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 one of the, obviously, the biggest drivers, right? This is really about the learning. Um, we also are talking about, you know, deeper learning opportunities. We're also really looking at how we can use the, uh, um, you know, the asynchronous part of online to, to, to really do some, some neat things from a discovery and sharing perspective that, that um, 
that sometimes can be difficult in a more traditional classroom. So how do we really leverage that in, in more meaningful ways? Um, improve learning skills and increase self-efficacy in online learning, right? So, um, you know, really it's about trying, just like in our online classes, is, is, you know, is really trying to pay attention to those learning skills and helping students become more independent, um, reinforce self-regulation. And really that's part of, um, you know, what, what we espouse to do through, you know, the ways in which we interact with, with students through our, our, our coursework, but also one of the things that we ask um, the moderators to to help us with really in terms of you know um, trying trying to reinforce those skills as well and then that last part in terms of exploring new models of collaboration this whole project is, is really about um, is, is really is really about that okay so um, the what we did then in terms of the planning we kind of did it in, in two sections and I'm just gonna walk through this really quickly we started out just with some you know some obviously some bigger things and some bigger conversations um, and that was really around you know um, you know what do we envision collaboration between the students and schools to look like right um, and then we talked more specifically about the hybrid design um, and we tried to just to come up with uh, you know a couple of uh, models that we thought might be effective um, and then we again we talked more about the asynchronous components and really looking at that those asynchronous components and trying to say okay um, you know how are we going to use the the, asyn the the asynchronous time you know whether it's actually in the classroom or 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 the students you know out in in um, in their communities to drive deeper learning and then that last part about how can we optimize our impact care and support of students right the big one right. Um, and so those were sort of, you know, the first things that we talked about. And then as we walked through those and we got to that second part and we started talking about the practical, right? Um, it, it's really where we got to the second part. So all this is in one big document and there's some other things that kind of fall in, in below there. I, I did highlight there on your screen one sentence that, that is, you know, that is right on the piece of paper, right? Right on the planning document. Um, because I think it's really important, right? I mean, it's, 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 it's really about understanding that, that this is a process, not a project, right? Um, and, um, and then, and to, to in the, you know, as a journey, you know, to just to be able to humbly recognize that, that this is a work in progress, right? We're, 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 we're never really wholly complete. Um, and so that's sort of the approach we've taken to this. So the first thing we did then was I said, hey, you know, what, what about, you know, regarding the, the tier one conversations are most important and what are the things that we need to make sure to pay most attention to? And then the second part is, it's really about JBLA's way, J, the JBLA way in terms of engagement, communication, and assessment, and how are we going to make sure we do those things well, okay? So that's sort of the process that we went through in terms of planning, okay? Um, what I'm going to do now is turn the, um, let's turn my screen back off. And now we're going to get into the actually what you hear from the people who were who have the boots on the ground and are actually doing the classes. Okay, so I'm going to ask our teachers to start with, and then we're going to go to our moderator um, who's with us today. And then we're lastly again we're going to we're going to have Tilana share a little bit of her experience with the students. So Dr. Carol Kelly is teaching a class between students at Seattle Prep and students at Verbum Day in in Watts. Okay, and so she's going to share a little bit of of what uh, she's been up to. Hi, thanks so much for the introduction, Jeff, and hi to everybody who's out there online. Um, I'm gonna try to do a little screen sharing as well. I, um, based on what Jeff said, just wanna highlight the, um, the interesting component of this, especially from the perspective, uh, my perspective, um, and that is the, the balance between and the interaction between synchronous and asynchronous uh, uh, learning that the students uh, have to deal with on a regular basis. So in terms of designing the curricu curriculum, it's a little bit different. You want to be thinking um, how much time the students will have asynchronously and how can that time be used effectively when they come back together in a classroom in a synchronous session online and um, the exciting part about this for me is um, this the environments that these students are from are extremely different uh, the level of diversity represented between students going to Seattle prep and living in uh, the community that they live in in Seattle and the community that students at Verbum day live in is, is wildly different 
And the class I teach um, focuses on diverse populations and how they're represented um, in terms of the arts. So I'm finding that this balance between synchronous and asynchronous learning is pretty interesting. I I'm going to try to share a little bit of my screen with you. Um, uh, this one in particular, if you can see that. So this is, uh, this is an assignment that I gave uh, the first week. And I asked the students to go out into their community and uh, see what they could find that represented the tension between multiculturalism and the concept of a melting pot. So knowing that the students who live in Watts are going to see very different things on the street that the stu than the students in Seattle are going to see. And this is just a little bit of an example um, of the difference. So this is a student uh, who took a picture that happens to be Cap Hill right by Seattle University uh, where I teach and this is a student who selected something from um, his neighborhood literally right around the corner from his house in Watts and and um, the students this was in a forum so students were analyzing not just uh, um, uh, what they see in the cityscape, but rather how that's representative of this tension and then they, uh, between multiculturalism and the melting pot, they were analyzing both the art and then they were responding to one another's viewpoints. And um, this is another example. A student, a student from Seattle, and this is a student from uh, South Central Los Angeles. And the students initially started out um, as they do in any classroom, a little bit reluctant to say, hey, you know, I'm not sure about your ideas. I might want to disagree with you a little bit. Initially, of course, it's all great idea. I completely uh, agree with you. But as the conversation went on and the images started to shift and change, what I found was that students became more willing to spend that asynchronous time really looking, really looking at the ideas of another student, which they often don't have in a regular classroom. Someone shares something and then you move on to the next person and then that conversation stops. Online, the forum continues. And um, uh, because you haven't seen somebody for a couple of days, you go back and you realize, hey, somebody wrote to me two days ago, and suddenly it, um, it reawakens your interest in the conversation. And if I can find, where is this? Um, this is the post that started the forum, if you can see it. This was the assignment. And by the time we get to, um, uh, we get down here to, I think it was Hector's that I wanted, um, uh, we get to, what Hector has displayed, we start having nested conversations that are addressing the very differences just between the art and also between two different populations, kids that live in two different areas, and how they see the art very differently based on where they're from. And so that balance between synchronous, asynchronous, coming back to something that you saw a few days ago and saying, hey, wait a minute, you have completely different ideas than I do. Um, that's, that's an exciting component of it. The one last thing I'll say before I leave, and that's in terms of the model that Jeff put up there, the classroom model. I kind of feel like the moderator should be part of that middle circle there with the teacher because you cannot do it without the moderators. If, if there are not people um, in the classrooms, uh, in the schools, helping even navigate something just as simple as, for example, these two students have an event this week. They're not going to be able to get back to you. Those moderators really take on a much larger role than, um, than, than you might expect, and I'm eternally grateful for their, their contribution. Um, I don't know how much time I have, so I, I have other things I could share, but I'll, I'll stop there for now. Thanks, Carol. Mm -hmm. um, so Steve Hessler is going to share a little bit. So Steve's teaching a second class on economics, um, entrepreneurship, and ethics. Um, and that course is between students in Seattle Prep and students at Red Cloud High School in uh, Pine Ridge, South Dakota, and that's the school that uh, Teilani attends. Steve doesn't have his video with us today, but he is here, and so um, I'm gonna have him share a little bit about um, their class before then we hear from, from, from David Smith, one of our moderators. All right, thanks, Jeff, and thanks, Carol, for that. Uh, that was, I've always been curious about your course, and I, I feel like I know it a little bit better, so it, it looks wonderful. 
I want to uh, just try to describe the excitement of a moment in this experience of uh, collaborative education between Seattle Prep and Red Cloud High School. As, as Mike said a little bit earlier, uh, in different time zones across mountain ranges and valleys and rivers. Uh, because I've been uh, teaching economics for about four decades now, and, and uh, I've wondered, uh, you know, how, how to excite and, and get students to really see the power of economics as a discipline and to kind of integrate it or bring it into their life as a way of uh, using it as an optic with which to view the world a little bit differently. Uh, in essence, economics is about jobs and money. <laughs> but also, uh, this moment that I want to describe to you uh, dealt with uh, something that's very important to commercial relations, and that is uh, a trust. So we did uh, some traditional exercises with our textbook. We read about uh, interpersonal uh, trust and uh, institutional trust. We looked at some videos uh, from a neuroeconomist, Paul Zak, and looked at the uh, neurochemical uh, explanation of trust. Uh, oxytocin is released. Uh, when people uh, enter into commercial relations uh, with one another and trust is elevated and so on. But another feature of this collaborative model is the opportunity in the synchronous setting to bring the two groups of students together and, and share an experience, in this case, uh, either a game or a simulation. Most recently, it was uh, the classic ultimatum game that uh, I've played many, many times, but it was always in the context of one classroom. Most of the students were in the same zip code. Uh, you know, they saw each other every day. But this time around, what happened, which was so exhilarating and thrilling, uh, at least to me, was uh, the trust uh, game, just uh, or the, the nature of the game is such that students pair up uh, one student is given uh, some points or money or something, and then they make an offer to their partner. The partner can accept or reject this, and, and then they accumulate, hopefully, uh, uh, a shared points or dollars or whatever it is. But in this case, uh, we started off with a couple of rounds uh, inside uh, the walls of each school. But then uh, in the last round, there was... Uh, uh, ultimatum game played with students between the two schools. And that was amazing. That I've never been able to do in the, you know, four decades of teaching this wonderful subject. Um, and so that, that for me was really, really thrilling. And as Carol mentioned earlier, couldn't have done it without Dave Smith and Greg Starman at the two schools. And not only are they uh, content experts, but they're also uh, in invaluable in terms of making sure everything about the technology uh, works, like video, for example. <laughs> yeah. uh, my video is not working today. But, uh, but that was, uh, I think, one of the most thrilling experiences of my professional uh, uh, life. It was just so exhilarating to, to have that occur, again, uh, between two groups of students that I could not have done uh, without this model. So thanks very much for, for listening. Great. Um, thank you for, um, for the, so those are the, the teacher's perspectives on what's happening in the classroom. Now what I want to do is um, I'm going to ask Dave Smith, who is the moderator of both the classes at Seattle Prep. Um, so, the, and I'm going to have him just um, explain a little bit of, of the things that, that he's involved in as it relates to this model. But really, the, the model again, the, the moderator again, is really sort of the support person who's um, um, you know you know tasked by the teachers to do some specific things on their behalf, right? Um, whether it's in a synchronous session or kind of setting some things up in the classroom um, relating to hey, this is what we're doing this week, and to make sure kids ha are here, right? And really kind of helping kind of just to move, move things along. And then also serving as, a, as an extra support in terms of help seeking, right? So being able to, to when students are struggling with that, 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 that concept of help seeking going directly with teachers to be able to, to kind of um, intervene on their behalf. To, to, to make sure that things go smoothly. Um, and Dave is, uh, this is really, really, really 
what, what, what we're learning in year two, right? This is really, really, really a critical role as both Steve and, and, and Carol have said. Um, uh, we need good moderators for this, and Dave is a really good one. So, Dave, thanks for 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 some, taking some time today to share um, your experience with with uh, the role of the moderator. Well, well, thank you, Jeff, for your kind words, and and Professor Kelly and and Professor Hessler. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. My name is David Smith. Uh, I'm a health and exercise teacher here at Seattle Prep. I have a background in sports science, biology, and psychology. Uh, and I, this is my second year of being a moderator uh, within the class. Uh, so uh, I'm, I was asked by Jeff and, and Mike to give some opinions of my experiences. And uh, so that's what I'm, what I'm gonna do. Um, I think at the beginning when myself and Mr. Kelly had a, a conversation about this role, uh, the one question that I had naturally was, am I a teacher? Am I a teacher's assistant? Am I a facilitator? Am I a uh, for want of a better phrase, someone who's a, a babysitter for the class, who's just going to keep kids in line. And it was very interesting to define that role. Uh, and I think we did a very good job. Mike did a very good job of uh, outlining my role within that. And I think during that first year, we kind of fine-tuned that just a little bit. Uh, I think it was a huge benefit. I know all of my students in class. So I have an already emotional uh, well that I can use in order to kind of facilitate any lessons or questions they have. There's already an inbuilt level of trust. So for example, uh, I'll use Carol as an example, Professor Kelly. If she sets an assignment on a project and there is a question, instead of having 10 of the same questions going to Professor Kelly, all asking the same thing, they would go to me first and I would be able to say, oh, okay. So this is obviously a common theme among the class. Uh, I would then go to Professor Kelly, who would then either reach out directly to the class online by one of the forums or email, uh, or we'd do it in one of our synchronous sessions. So it was, a, a, I kind of returned myself the thermometer. So I kind of gauge the temperature of the classroom, uh, and I'm able to facilitate information and feedback post-class to Carol and uh, to Stephen of what went well, what didn't go well. Um, and that's kind of one of the key roles that I felt has been interesting for me. Um, I thoroughly enjoyed the topics. Uh, I actually did art appreciation as a, as a part of my undergrad, so I really appreciate Carol's class. Uh, opens a lot of different horizons. Uh, I've never actually done economics, uh, Professor Hessler, so I find that extremely interesting. Uh, so having a moderator who is the, interested in learning as well as being able to obviously facilitate the process, I found makes my time enjoyable. Uh, and I think hopefully that rubs off on our students too. Uh, you know, it's not a case of me sitting in a class and moderating a class and <clears throat> as soon as the bell goes archetypal, everyone leaves. Uh, there's a little bit more to it and connection than that. Uh, and I've really enjoyed the, obviously I'm English if you haven't already figured that out. So I really enjoy the cross-cultural uh, diversity of working with Verbum Day uh, and Red Cloud and seeing things from a different perspective that most of our students here at PrEP perhaps don't get the opportunity mm -hmm. to do. Uh, and, and that for me uh, lends conversations that go beyond the walls of the classroom. So kids will talk to me in the halls or they'll ask me in a different class about something and that to me shows we've kind of planted a seed uh, and those kids are thinking about things differently which is exactly from my perspective of what the course is designed to do. Uh, and, and quite frankly, I've thoroughly enjoyed those lessons. I sit down as a, as a staff member and I'm, I really view myself as a student because uh, it's, it's a really enjoyable experience. I just, lucky for me, I don't get graded on my work. So <laughs> well, other than that, I find it thoroughly enjoyable. David, thank you so much. It's um, it's wonderful to have you the part of it. Now for the the this is where the, the this is the showstopper. This is the person we really all want to hear from, um, um, because it's really hopefully the person who's being impacted most through this experience. Um, um, so Tidlani uh, Jackson is a student at um, Red Cloud High School in in Pine Ridge, and she is um, in uh, Dr. Uh, Hessler's class, um, and so. I'm going to ask her to just to provide um, just some thoughts about about her experience so far. Um, well, like the class topic, I didn't, I never knew like how connected the three things were: the ethics, 
entrepreneurship and economics until the class. And it's like helping me realize, like, especially with our last unit, the value and trade, how like, how present like the three aspects are in like value and trade specifically. And um, I think like the, the meetings we have um, are like really helpful. Like then if it were just an online class, um, because we get to like, uh, like hear from the other students and in the forum discussions, like after we post ours, we can read what they say and like kind of compare and contrast their ideas with our own. Um, I think I would like it if we could like meet more often, if that were possible. And um, yeah, that's good. Yeah. Those are all valuable. It, it, the, the, and one of the questions I think that most people were going to, uh, one that I know that my, uh, Mike Kelly is particularly interested in is when we've talked about the number, right? What is the right number for the synchronous sessions? So I'm glad you brought that up as being something that you value um, and you'd like to, to see more of. Um, I think that's, um, that's a nice reflection on, uh, from you, so thank you. Um, we are now at that point at 2.32, so we've made pretty good time here, um, but it is time for the Q&A. Um, and so what we're hoping is that um, you, you have some, some, some things you, you'd like, um, any of the panelists, if there's a particular panelist that you'd like um, to, to ask your question, please, when, as you're asking the question in the Q&A, go ahead and, and make sure we, we know there's a particular person. Otherwise, um, we'll just try and field them as, as best we can and, and get the right person responding. Um, so with that, I, this is always a period where we need to wait a little bit and see, um, for, for the questions to come in. So um, in the meantime, do any of you other folks, any of your other panelists have anything um, in terms of maybe Teilani's reflections, any, any, any personal thoughts relating to, to, um, to her reflections that you have? I do, I do Jeff. Uh, to, you you kind of hit on it, but Teilani, just hearing the students say that I'm thirsty for more interactions, that was um, something like Jeff, you said that's really important to us at Seattle Prep from a high level. Like we get that we have technology and we get that we can do traditional kind of online classes. What's really key for us and what we're still trying to, it's gotten better from year one to year two, but, but we don't engage in this if our, if our kids can't see each other's faces and do some of the kinds of work that uh, Professor Kelly, Dr. Kelly, and uh, Steve talked about. For our students to be able to see the face of Talani and for her to see the face of our students and have as authentic and genuine interactions as technology can allow for is really what's high stakes for us here as an admin team. So of course there's got to be meet with curriculum, but we kind of view that word companionship as kind of a sacred word. And really what we're hoping is in some of the reflections at the end of the year when we really get there is that our students are talking about kind of being companions with students from Red Cloud or Verbum Day or wherever this might lead us. That's really uh, of really high importance to me as, as, as an administrator. And so just hearing Teilani say that um, just gets me fired up. That's good. All right. If, if, if yes, Steve. Uh, uh, add to what, uh, what Mike said and to express my gratitude for uh, Teilani uh, did a great job. Um, and again, uh, thanks from all of us for for giving up your time and and uh, your and sharing us uh, sharing with us your input. But it was it was good to uh, and I want to add my voice too to the uh, to the derived demand for more synchronous sessions. And I know that that was worked out ahead of time, and it's a coordination issue between the schools and so on. But I agree with you, Teilani. There's there's more we could do. I'm sure. Uh, with Professor Kelly, there's more that can be done. So that's an area that uh, that we might want to circle back and and uh, and look at. What's the optimal number of synchronous sessions? But uh, 
uh, Teilani, thanks, uh, thanks very much. And Mike and, and Dave, thank you too. Yeah. And I will mention, because this is really, um, um, the, obviously, the, the, the tools, the one that we're using right now in terms of Zoom, um, they're, they're becoming pretty sophisticated. There's some really great um, resources. They're, they're much more reliable than they were even a couple of years ago. But, but, but the, the, the hard part um, on the planning side and the reason that, you know, we, we, uh, even just with the two schools, um, it's difficult. It's difficult coordinating time. Mm -hmm. um, your schedules are different. Um, you know, just trying to work that in is 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 a difficult task that that um, um, schools just kind of need to recognize on the front end the effort that it really takes and the commitment that it takes um, to, to to do this. So. Because and, and a big I would just jump in on that too and maybe even ask Teilani um, if she has any insights. For me as a teacher, uh, I, I've um, created at least two assignments uh, in the semester where I've cre uh, put groups together and the groups are half of my students from one school and half from another. Um, and as Jeff said, though, it's the timing issue. You know, I give them a week or two weeks to work together, but of course their, sc their school calendars are so different and the events that they participate in are different from school to school. And so my, uh, one of the questions I have going forward as a teacher is how can I more effectively um, create an opportunity for students to come together. Um, for example, I put them in a group to come together and do a group presentation, as you would in a regular classroom, but um, they're from two different sides of uh, the Pacific Coast. So uh, how to get students, um, I mean, I know kids are technology whizzes and they can communicate on FaceTime, perhaps things like that, but how to really navigate that um, as a teacher to make sure that students are able to connect even outside of the synchronous sessions with one another is an important component for me that I've, I've, I've found to be challenging and that I would love um, some better answers for. Um, I know at the beginning of our class, we were put into groups by um, Dr. Hessler. Um, I don't recall ever like getting in touch with the person I was matched with or if there was like an assignment that like required it, but I do remember like seeing my name beside someone else's name as like being paired together. Uh-huh. Um, and I do think like if, uh, if I was like paired with someone and we had like an assignment, if it was like on a weekly basis, I could make the time. I had like participate in like several after school activities. Mm -hmm. um, like, especially like during this time of the year, but I think it could be possible just with like the one hour time difference from like Red Cloud and Seattle to Fred. Mm -hmm. uh, I think the time could be made like if it was on a weekly thing. Okay, so it would, would be better if it were perhaps in the semester you're saying? Yeah. Okay, that's a good insight. Thank you so much. Thank you. You can't, you can't imagine how much it helps to have, a stu have student input for a teacher. It really helps. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I think some of the enjoyment, like David talked about the enjoyment of being on this. For me, for my lens, some of the selfish enjoyment I have is I've got people that I didn't know two years ago and I've been able to engage in meaningful and thoughtful conversations about how we can serve our students in, in better and more meaningful and more creative ways. It's been an awesome experience for me to collaborate. And in terms of just teamwork, David talked about being a coach, I'm being a coach. It's really been fun collaborating with a group of people that have all been willing to uh, make sacrifices, uh, for lack of a better phrase, give up a little skin. In other words, they've adjusted, all schools have adjusted their schedules a little bit. Professors have adjusted their schedules a little bit. Um, it's really been fun. You know, one of the unintended um, educations I've had in trying to collaborate, I've learned so much more about Red Cloud, um, what their mission is, what their what their students uh, uh, are thirsty for, um, how they do school at Red Cloud, and the same is true as Furman Day, and it's allowed me to engage with my administrative team 
in, in ways of looking at our own, our own school in new and different ways too. So uh, it's been a joy, an absolute joy to collaborate with everybody. Thank you so much for that, those comments. Um, we, I think we must have done a really good job of presenting because we, we, we don't have any questions from, from the participants, which like I, I mentioned at the beginning, sometimes you know, um, that does happen. And with Thanksgiving um, approaching in two days, um, I think we're probably all ready to go home and start making preparations. So thank you so much uh, to all the panelists and for all the participants who took time today to spend with us um, to learn more about this important project. Um, and um, if you do have any questions moving forward, you know, over the week, oh, we got something in the chat. Oh, okay, just a, from Jen, okay. Uh, you know, please feel free to, to send me a note. Um, um, you all know my email address at uh, JVLA, um, and I'll be sure to forward that information on to the appropriate party for additional responses. So take care, everybody. Have a great Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving, everyone. Thank you so bye. much. Bye, Mike. Bye, Dave. Bye, Carol. Bye, Tilani. Bye, guys. Take Thanksgiving care, for everything. Bye. Thank you. Bye.